Our voices. Our stories. Our community. My name is James Lee and I'm a sledge hockey player with the Grand Prairie Wolverines. I was, I was there just shopping at Costco and uh, this lady had approached me, staring at my leg, staring at me, and I kind of caught her out of the corner of my eye. And I, I kind of walked around two or three times, walked around and I thought, okay, I'm talking to that man. And she asked me if I had played hockey. I said, I used to. And I said, we're the adapted sport program um, programs in Grand Prairie. And he was like, oh, so yeah, I invited him to come out and try some. And uh, she wanted me to come out and play sledge hockey. I had no idea what it was about. I'd heard a little bit about it in the Olympics. Uh, our men were, were winning or playing at the time for gold medal. Um, so I came out and that's how it all started for me. I have what they call Berger's syndrome. And so my arteries um, get very hard and solid and there's nothing that they can do to break it up or bypass it. Uh, it's actually currently happening in my left leg as well. We're going through some tests and stuff to see if we can save it or not. But um, that's, I went in for a sore foot, believe it or not. Um, like most men, I ignored the pain, went to work, continued on for a couple weeks. The pain got worse. Um, I went to the hospital and they flew me to Edmonton. Um, and they cut it to uh, just above my, sh my calf here and uh, below the knee. So my expectations are always high, but my limitations have never been actually reached. And this was the first time that I actually realized my own mortality. I'm Emily Van Amstel and I'm the program coordinator um, and coach for a lot of the programs with the Wolverines Wheelchair Sports Association. You know what, it's pretty special to be able to do this, to be honest. This is probably one of the coolest jobs you could, you could ever dream of. Because this is the type of thing that really enhances somebody's life. People come to you and you're, you're making them happy. Because some of the people that we support maybe would have never felt or thought that they could ever play an organized competitive sport before. My name is Tyler Horrocks. Um, I'm involved with the Wolverines Wheelchair Sports Association, um, which they do a bunch of a different, different adapted sports for people with disability or for people that are able-bodied. The disability that I have is called cerebral palsy, and the easiest way I find to explain that to people uh, is that pretty much the message that goes from your brain to your legs to basically tell you to stand or you know the message that says um, to stand that message doesn't get sent to my legs um, but when it comes to you know um, playing stand-up hockey I couldn't do that right because uh, I couldn't stand up because of my disability it was tough for me you know like you I remember there's one memory that comes to mind I had a friend that had hockey practice one day or something and we were hanging out and he says well I gotta go to hockey practice and I remember uh, I was, we went into the hockey rink and um, he went and he did his thing or whatever and I was just sitting there watching thinking man I wish I could be out there playing right just the whole time and you know you're watching him play and, and uh, wishing you could be out there as well. And sledge hockey is something anybody can do. Everybody can do. You don't have to have balance. You don't have to have legs. You know, we had one guy with one arm playing with us last year. One arm. I'd say compared to, you know, stand-up hockey, the only difference for sledge hockey is that you're sitting down, right? And maybe, maybe you know, a lot more upper body strength is needed. You get into, for, for me, for example, I have one leg. So I get into the sledge on dry land, and then I get help getting pushed out onto the ice. I basically say it's a metal frame. You have a metal frame, basically, and then there's a... a I don't know what you'd call it, a plastic bucket on top of it that's secured to the metal frame. So now you're sitting there and your butt's in there and you got a seatbelt that goes over top right around your waist. Imagine you're sitting in a toboggan. Well, you're sitting in a sledge. You get two hockey sticks instead of one. You've got two blades underneath you and you just kind of push yourself forward with these two sticks. On the end of your hockey stick up top, you're gonna to have your normal hockey blade, which is what you use to handle the puck. And then on the other end of the stick, you're gonna have uh, picks. And so that makes it so that you can push yourself forward. So, you know, as you're skating, you kind of pass the puck in front of you a little bit and then you skate with it 
and then you pass in front and you skate with it and then shooting's all the same right you can shoot with your left or your right and then the game of hockey is pretty much the same <laughs> I I fell over quite a bit it's very difficult it, you have to be strong and it's a one hour the first time I went out I'm like an hour is not long it's got to be longer than this two and a half minutes later I was like when's this over I mean, winning, winning is fun, but to me, I'm just so happy to be out there skating and playing the game that, like, you know, winning is only part of it. To me, a lot of it for me is being able to be out there skating and playing the game, which I think that is for other players too. They like being out there, they like skating. You know, you, you, you do the best you can and they're still going to support you. You know, your coaches are there, your teammates are there. You have that. Uh, you know, you have support at home with your spouses, with your family, but with your friends on that court or on that rink, it's different. There's just something about it that it's strengthened. It's, it's bonding. It's, it's, yeah. My favorite part of this job is the coaching. Yeah, for sure. That's really where my heart is. I mean, there's lots of other aspects to it. A coach doesn't just do the hands-on. I've just seen so many changes in our athletes. Just being able to get down and play something that they maybe never thought they could they could do before, so it's really rewarding. It's really really rewarding, especially seeing them grow, and then grow in community, grow in friendship. That that part of it too, the social aspect, not just the the physical component. I mean, Emily brings people to her house. She puts on barbecues. I'm sure she does so many things that she's not expected to do as an organizer, but she does. Meeting her that day, it's so hard to explain that I felt wanted. She had no idea what I could do on a sledge. She had no idea if I could even, you know, glide, fall. Um, but she smiled and extended out a hand with a card in it and said, come on out. And that meant more to me at that point than anything. I just felt wanted. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. So right now we're at the Coca-Cola Center uh, hockey rink. Um, today we're holding our first GP Wolverines sledge hockey tournament here in town. So I've been amped up for probably almost close to three weeks since I heard about it, right? Uh, anything to do with sledge hockey, I get excited. So when I heard about that we were gonna have our first home tournament, I was really pumped, right? Getting to represent the home crowd and, and getting to play on home ice, right? Because a lot of the times we've been away from home um, so to get to play on home ice for you know my family, my friends, everybody that's going to be here, I'm really excited for it. So I got to finish go getting my gear on. I got some of it on already, but I got to go finish getting dressed and get my sledge and my sticks and, and get out there, get warmed up, and get ready for game time. I think game time is in about half an hour. I know my coach was just walking by, totally telling me I got to get back to the dressing room. So I better get over there as soon as I can. The community stepped up and put teams in. Some of these people that are coming out and playing with us are not seasoned sledge hockey players, but perhaps hockey players on actual skates in their legs. So it's hard when you use your core, because you use your arms and your shoulders and your stomach muscles, and you have muscles you didn't know you had when you play sledge hockey. Um, get up afterwards, and a, few, a day later you'll notice it. So. Again, the awareness is, is so, um, forgotten sometimes. You know, walking to and from my car when I had two legs, I had blinders on to things that I just wasn't paying attention to. And that could be anything in life in general, right? Somebody walking across the street with uh, crutches or a cane or a walker. I never paid attention to that stuff. It was just almost normal to see it, but I didn't recognize it. They mean the same thing, but they don't. So I think that awareness is huge. Um, whether you see it and don't recognize it, but if you hear it and can listen to it and understand it, 
That's one thing I like about the Wolverines. Um, you don't have to have a disability to play our sports. That's what I like about it. It's for able-bodied people or people with disabilities. And I mean, if we can get a good mix, um, just makes everybody feel involved, right? Like, I mean, a lot of our players today are able-bodied and some are in my shoes where they have disabilities. But when we're out on the ice, everybody's equal, everybody's the same, and everybody is out there playing the game of hockey and just having fun, right? Um, there's no disabilities, there's no mental handicaps or anything like that. It's just everybody's out there just to play the game. Um, and everybody's out there to encourage everybody, right? I mean, 95% of the people that are out there haven't ever played sledge hockey before, so it will be amazing for them just to experience it. But just the support and being able to really spread the word and just raise awareness to our adapted sport programs here in Rampart. My name is Taylor Stringer and I am volunteering at the Coke Center with the Wolverines today. I had been filling in at their practices, but for like playing in a game, this is my first time, yeah, ever being competitive with it, I guess. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was really difficult to, a lot of upper body strength compared to skating around on the ice, but yeah, I had fun and it was enjoyable. Being around the practices and tournaments have been very eye-opening. I never expected to see how much people that do have the disabilities enjoy playing the sports just as much as people that don't have disabilities playing with it. And it was great to see everyone having fun. When I was trying to introduce my friends to sledge hockey, I was explaining that it was basically everything he played in his hockey tournaments, but he would just be on a sledge. My friends had so much fun. They had the best time learning how to be on the sledge and uh, just skating around using two sticks instead of just their one. I think that like to be an athlete and to get a different side of your sport is incredible for them. You know, I see these able-bodied fellas and ladies that come out and enjoy the sport with us. It's exactly that, it's with us. It's not, when I used to play hockey as a young man, it was competitive. This isn't competitive in, in that sense. It's more of a get together of people of different ethnicity, different sexes, like you name it. And we're getting on a sheet of ice, frozen water, and we're smiling. And we don't have differences. We all are sitting down on two blades and nobody's, some people are faster, some people are slower, but everybody's smiling. Nobody's out to necessarily win. The objective, of course, like normal hockey, is to shoot that puck into that net. However, if you don't, you know what? People are laughing out there, people are falling over, can't get up, and you're helping each other. You don't see that in normal hockey, right? I think for myself, you know, this, this feeling of failure, this feeling of why, um, it's self-pity. It, it, it's very much, um, for myself, to lose a limb at my age, at 46 years old, was difficult. You know, 46 years of having a leg and then not having a leg is really something to get used to. I know the past couple of years for me, I've had like some personal issues that I've been trying to work through. Um, and I know the Wolverines have been there to help me through those issues, whether it's health problems or, you know, uh, whether it's just personal problems that I'm having struggles in life. Um, I've always had the Wolverines to turn to, to play sports and kind of just forget about that stuff or say even just to forget about my, my cerebral palsy. When I get into that sledge, it's just, I'm free, man. I'm playing hockey and it just brings me so much happiness. I'm going to lose my left leg. I've been told by my doctors now that I'm losing my left leg. And so I will be a double amputee here soon. And that sucks. That's, that's uh, shitty. But It's 
I'm about to get through it. It, uh, it'll be tough, but, uh, I got kids that, that need me to get through it, and, uh, and I will. And I got, uh, I hope people know that uh, no matter what, the adversities that come in life, it's, uh, it'll get better. It will. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Losing a leg is not fun. It's not, but it's made me who I am. It's made me the person that can sit here and talk to you and tell others my journey, my story, my experiences, my growth, my healing, my ups, my downs. And I will have more ups and I will have more downs. But I will never let my downs affect you that's not my job in this. This is not my role in this anymore. My role is to be a great husband, be a better father, and let anybody in the world who wants to know about me and my story, tell them. If a guy from the streets of Toronto who dodged bullets and knives can sit here and cry in front of you, um, It's okay to. You have to be able to. If you can't, it doesn't, it feels good to cry. It feels good to feel. There's nobody that should be ready to shut down. Deal with what's going on. Embrace it. The change is there. It's gonna be there. There's nothing you can do to make it any different. You can't do it alone. Nobody can, I don't think. As tough as I might think I am, I needed people. To have a coach like Emily is just great. I mean, she's always there if you want to talk or always there if you have issues. And like I say, um, if I want something to do or if I want to help out or something, she's always got something that I can do. She always keeps me busy. Um, and if, if it wasn't for her, I know a couple weekends ago I got a chance to go down to a camp in Calgary to get some sledge hockey training um, and she made that happen. She, uh, she found the schedule for us, she found when it was going to happen and through the Wolverines we got funding to be able to travel down there and go and do this camp. If it wasn't for Emily we wouldn't have had that chance as well so uh, yeah. So, and I mean when she boosts us up as well. Um, like when we're down on the bench or whatever, um, you know, if she sees it, she'll point, she'll say good job or whatever, you know, keep pushing or um, just a good morale for our team. She's always got a smile on her face and she's always happy. Like when we're out there playing today, when we're happy, she's happy, right? I mean, I can, I can hear her over a, a lot more of the teammates sometimes. Like when I scored my goal, I could hear her shouting along with the rest of the teammates as well, right? So she was just as happy. And I mean, for me to score that goal today is because of her, the practices she's been running, the stuff that she's been getting us to learn, uh, our positioning, our puck handling, our, um, just pushing when we're skating. When she sees that we're tired, she'll tell us to keep pushing. I love my job, so that in itself makes it worth it. If you don't love what you're doing, you're not gonna give 100%. I like a challenge, and this is definitely a challenge. Everybody is, progressing skill-wise and everybody is excited about what's coming so as long as you can keep that excitement going then the rest will follow and yeah it's just it's it's life-changing these individuals they they haven't had this type of recreation or sport in their life and the the happiness the joy that they experience makes my job worthwhile it's more than just coaching it's more than just admin or program coordinating it's there's, there's just, it's so much deeper than that. Nobody's looking at you that you're different. Nobody's making you feel different. Nobody's saying anything. Everybody's going through what they're going through. And none of it matters on the ice. None of it. For a moment in time, 
you're playing hockey. There's nothing else going on. You're not sad, you're not mad. You're going for a little hard piece of rubber that's sliding around the ice and you can't catch it. <laughs> it's fun. You get to smile again. You get to be a kid again. You get to forget your problems. You get to forget what's bothering you. Yeah, and if they weren't there, I honestly don't know what I would do with myself. Um, so I hope they never leave. I, you know, <laughs> I, I'm gonna. I always say I'm gonna play sledge hockey until it's physically not possible for me to. Or I'm gonna um, enjoy it as long as I can. That's what's a little bit different about I think our adapted sport programs is that we are like a family. You know, even though. Not everybody plays all the sports. There are athletes here today that are coming out, coming out just to support the people that are playing sledge hockey. Um, because we've, we've formed a family. A sport, especially sledge hockey for me, has introduced me to wonderful people. A wonderful organization. And that in itself, and, that, and that's not even just a sport. I mean, that's, when, you, when you take the people that make that sport, that enjoy that sport with me, we're not always on the ice. When we're off the ice, we still have that. Sport is such a powerful thing, I believe, that it brings people together. Finding out about sledge hockey was probably one of the best things that happened to me in my life. Um, just opened a whole door of sports that I never knew about, right? Um, and it's just great being active, right? And getting to play sports that I watched my friends and family and everybody play when I was growing up, but I couldn't join in because I couldn't stand up, but now I can play those sports. I'm a part of a team, I'm a part, you know, people call you their hockey team, your family, right? Um, and that's kind of what it feels like out there. That's your friends, your family, right? It's about social, being a social, we're social beings, right? So, you know, everybody, it's not just about show up this time, these are your drills, goodbye. Like there's a relationship that has to come along with it. You have to get to know the people, they have to trust you and they, that way they'll learn from you and they'll want to show up to their games or their practices. I now coach my son's hockey team. He's nine years old. And the Grand Prairie Minor Hockey League has allowed me to go onto the ice with my sledge and be part of that. And for me, it was huge. All of the people that were able-bodied said to me, it's amazing to watch somebody with a disability to get out there and still participate and be involved in something like they're not any different than anyone else. And that's what it's all about. You might be different, and we can agree that you are a little different. If you can't hear, if you can't see, if you can't walk, if you can't speak, you are a little different. But that's an amazing thing. We try to get everybody out, right? Everybody, it doesn't matter. I would say like even age group. I mean, it doesn't matter. If you wanna try our sports out, I mean, come and try them out. Uh, for me, you know, meeting Emily the way I did, uh, getting involved with sledge hockey and going from there and rolling from there, it's led me to meet some fantastic people. Uh, it's led me to, to, to understand that for me, because I've lost a limb, it's not done for me. I'm not done. It was a saving grace. Producer and director, Rue Jones. Cinematographer, David McGregor. Sound recordist, Cody Flynn. Editors, Rue Jones, Sebastian McKenzie. Integrated video specialist, Ron Rickford. Narrator, Jim Van Horn. Senior producer, Jennifer Johnson. Production supervisor, Jana Civitelli. Director production, Karen I. Director programming, Brian Perdue. Vice President Programming and Production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2018, Accessible Media, Inc.